Hey guys, so there's been a little bit of interest in the plating thickness videos I've been making and uh, one of the requests that have come up a couple of times is to have a look at mobile phones because there's obviously quite a lot of gold plating on mobile phones and it would be quite useful to know if any of it is actually worth chasing or whether uh, most of the gold plating on mobile phones is going to be the Enig uh, very thin plating. So you can see here I've got a uh, little bit of a pile that I've gathered up um, over the last few months. I generally don't try very hard to get hold of mobile phones. I only just grab them when they happen to come in with some other e-waste and I generally just get chucked into a box for uh, one day when I've got some time to disassemble them. But for today's video I have got three here which I felt uh, would be reasonably representative of mobile phones in general. You can see that I've, um, I've tried to go for a couple of older phones that um, have proper buttons and then a fairly generic Samsung touchscreen smartphone uh, as a comparison. So the first one here is a Kyocera and the model numbers on this sticker here if it means anything to uh, if that means anything to any of you guys but uh, the reason I chose that is it's um, it's got the the main control circuitry as well as the keypad on one PCB under this foil and so obviously what I will be checking on this one is the plating thickness of these um, of these keys that are like, like that that work under the metal caps so when you press a key on the outside you kind of click that metal cap down and it joins the uh, electrically joins the inside to the outside of those two little circles but I believe because because of the way this board is constructed where you've got components soldered there and this gold exposed here that this is going to be a very thin uh, e-neg plating the reason I say that is that hard gold is not very often used um, on a PCB like this because um, <clears throat> because hard gold doesn't solder very well. It's it's Enig solders very nicely, hard gold solders very badly. So what I think I might do in, the, in this case here is I'll choose this one down here on the corner so that we can have a look at the the circle, the gold plating for the circle as well as the gold plating for this uh, surrounding part. Um, I haven't scratched this uh, any of the solder mask to see whether uh, whether it's copper oops, sorry, or um, gold underneath the solder mask but I'm fairly sure we're going to find that they're mostly copper yeah so you can see I, I can see clearly there where I've scratched through that it's uh, copper under the solder mask so that's phone number one phone number two is a fairly generic see if I can find the model number, there it is, a fairly generic Samsung smartphone uh, model GT-i9195 and um, yeah so this is probably a, a bit more like what we're used to seeing on modern phones you you appear to have quite a lot of gold plating but I am going to bet pretty good money that this is going to be super thin enig it's just going to be uh, almost worthless from a uh, from a recovering the plated gold uh, point of view. What I will also do check at the same time is inside the same phone it looks like the the bottom speaker part has a couple of gold plated connectors there and I think they're probably going to be hard gold so I'll, I'll test uh, one of these in conjunction with a little bit of this gold uh, chopped out of that so that'll that'll cover a a fairly up-to-date smartphone. Now the second or the, the third one so that's A, B and C number C here has uh, is a I assume a fairly old phone it's a Sagem phone if you can see that there and I re I thought that it was probably fairly old because it uh, does not even have a camera on the back and I figured any phone without a camera is um, is likely to be fairly old um, I don't think there's any particular model number on this we can have a look at but the nice thing about this one, which is a bit different from our A sample, is the control board, which we see here, where we're fairly sure all of this, even the even the pads, are going to be Enig. And I'll just give that a scratch just to see. Yeah, so that one that one's also uh, copper underneath the 
the solder mask so I'll, I'll test one of these pads but at the same time its keypad board is a completely separate board and it doesn't appear to have anything soldered onto this side which means that there is a small chance but there is a chance that this stuff here will be hard gold so we'll test, uh, we'll test this in conjunction with one of the pads from that board so I'll just get these all chopped up with a side cutter or something um, get them under the microscope and then we'll see how they uh, compare to our standard enig and hard gold plating samples okay catch you guys soon okay hey guys so top left here so these these samples down the bottom let's go through those first they go a, sample a b and c as we saw in the previous part of this video so the one on the left is from the keypad of the Kyocera uh, oldish button phone the middle sample is um, a pad from the uh, Samsung touchscreen reasonably modern phone and the little pads down the bottom the ones in the middle there are from the microphone and speaker connector on the bottom and then on the right we've got uh, a sample from each of the two boards from the Sagem phone I believe yes from the Sagem button phone uh, the top one I believe is likely going to be Enig because it is um, it's on a, on a board that has a lot of stuff soldered to it the bottom one as you can see it's not very gold colored um, at the angle that you guys are looking at it from but if I, I'll try and just move it maybe a little bit it has got a bit of a there is you can see it there it is gold colored but I suspect that the gold might be treated on this one with some other metals to make it harder wearing um, so we'll see I'm not sure about thickness but we'll see what it does with the nitric acid anyway and then up the top we've got our normal control samples the the known enig board on the left that one there is known enig as per the, the last two videos and those are some well-worn uh, ram fingers so we're pretty sure that they are going to be hard gold but because they are quite worn and i'll show you the uh I'll show you the wear if we can focus on that you can see they're quite worn and so that might mean that we will actually see a bit of reaction where the gold is thinner where it's been worn but i just chose some ram fingers at random nothing special about those so we'll see how we go okay so as per the last two videos i have made a solution of 35 uh, percent concentrated nitric acid so i've taken some 70 percent nitric acid and uh, doubled its volume with some distilled water so we'll just give a drop I think as as last time we'll start with the enig sample that reacts pretty quickly we'll put some on our hard gold sample and then go for this one make sure we get some on the edge there um that bad there put some on this bed here and then if i move this up a bit i'm sorry it's not all fitting in very well into one frame but that's okay uh, put some on that one do some all over this one okay so i'll we'll just quickly uh well, look at the reaction already happening on that bottom right sample so i suspect whatever they've got in there with the gold to make it harder is very reactive so we'll see see what that does in the medium term but that's a yeah, very vigorous reaction to start with i also expect that if we look at our enig sample we should start seeing a little bit of a reaction and we do you can see that the uh, the bubbles are starting to form through the gold as we, we keep on saying the enig is thin enough that the the acid can react through the gold rather than around it uh, over here if we look at the we've got a little bit of a reaction happening with those vias there they must have some exposed copper but if we look at the actual fingers themselves and uh, nothing much happening there on the hard gold because that's what we pretty much expect and then let me see what this is doing okay so board number one uh, board number a sample so this is the Kyocera key, um, keypad phone obviously enig on its keypad as you can see because it's reacting almost as quick as our enig sample so maybe a 
a micro inch thicker plating, but not very much there. The pad from the Samsung mobile phone is doing very well. I'm surprised by this. I would have thought that this would be very, very thin ENIC, but that appears to actually be doing quite well. Uh, same with the pad from the Sagem phone, although that's starting to get a little bit of a reaction going. So also ENIC, probably a little bit thicker than, than this stuff here, where you can see a vigorous reaction. Um, so counter to my initial estimation or my initial guesses, I thought this stuff here was going to be super thin and ve you know, get an almost immediate reaction. And this here was going to be hard gold. So obviously this one here, let's move that to the center. This, which was on the uh, microphone and speaker connector from the Samsung phone, uh, which probably is the power connections. This is obviously ENIC because we're seeing a, a typical ENIC type reaction. And uh, this here is incredibly surprising. I, I am not sure why we are not seeing more of a reaction on this gold plating here. I would have thought that this would be very thin, um, or thinner than it is. Like, I'm, it's not hard gold plating, but it's it's interesting. Uh, this here, so this is the keypad board from the uh, from the Sagem phone. Uh, had a lot of uh, a very vigorous initial reaction and but it, the gold also looked a different color so i'm fairly sure that the the gold plating they've used on this is augmented with some other base metal to make it harder and that's why we're seeing that vigorous reaction so later on when we scratch it i'm hoping that we'll see either foils or you know see what the what the state of the gold for this one is okay so uh See if I can uh, potentially rotate it. So obviously, if I get back to this one here, which is our hard gold sample, you will see still nothing much really happening there. Okay, so I'll take this out to the maximum zoom, try and get them all in the shot, get it focused. Now I'm going to set this on time lapse now for 15 minutes, as per our usual test and also give them all an additional uh, drop of nitric acid. You can see the sample in the middle is starting to react. So obviously on the Samsung phone, that is a form of ENIG, but I would say likely to be a few micro inches thicker than the, the other ENIG samples I've looked at. So I'm going to set this on uh, time lapse now and I'll be back in 15 minutes. Okay, guys, so it's been about 15 minutes or so and things are certainly not looking very good for the plating thickness on cell phone boards. Um, if we do a quick visual check before we do a scrape test, you'll see uh, center of screen is my known ENIC sample and uh, the reaction has died down a bit, but I think uh, by now we know that the when I scrape that we're going to get some very fine kind of gold powder. Our um, hard gold sample is performing extremely well even though you can see visually you can see the scrapes as it's been inserted and removed there is absolutely no, rea no reaction anywhere on the uh, on the fingers themselves so uh, this is actually a very very good quality hard gold coating right there. Uh, looking at the reaction for sample A, this is the Kyocera uh, keypad type phone. Uh, as you can see, very likely to be an ENIG coating. Um, very similar reaction to what we saw with our standard ENIG sample above. Uh, pretty much the same thing for the uh, Samsung uh, general 
purpose touchscreen type phone. Uh, this reaction took a while to get started on this big pad, which suggests to me that the coating is actually a little bit thicker than the other ones. Uh, but we'll see what it looks like when we give that a scrape. Uh, this reaction here happened very fast, and as you can see, um, I can already see little bits of gold around the place as it's been loosened with the, the base metal getting eaten underneath. Okay, here is the uh, the non-keypad side of the Sagem keypad phone. So once again, pretty standard ENIG type reaction. Uh, possibly once again a little bit thicker than my, my test ENIG coating because you can see the reaction is still going which suggests that um, it has taken a little bit longer to actually work its way through the gold. Uh, here is the actual button from that phone and as you can see it's pretty much completely disintegrated so I believe there was some gold in there but whatever was in there with the gold uh, pretty much reacted very very nicely with the uh, nitric acid and pretty much disappeared. So uh, for our scrape tests I will scrape with the tip of the pipette again as I've done for the other two videos just to keep things consistent so we'll just hold that down give that a scrape and yep as you can see the gold is basically coming off as a very fine powder almost black because of how fine it is um, I don't think we're going to see any surprises here if I scrape the hard gold there is uh, no reaction anywhere which is pretty much what we expect the hard gold to do um, let's go down here to our sample A um, keypad PCB test so we'll just give that a scrape as well and yeah the very familiar exactly what we're expecting from a uh, from an ENIG sample you can see the uh, the very fine gold this is our Samsung mobile phone big piece of plated gold we're expecting this to be ENIG as well maybe a little bit thicker but still very very thin in the great grand scheme of things and as you can see there I am yeah so a very thin plating still uh, if you dissolved all of the base metal underneath this you would not end up with a uh, with a nice sheet of gold it would be uh, just powder basically if we look at this one here I'm gonna say it's probably gonna be very similar yeah you can see there it's uh, quite fine bits of gold and move on to our last this is the Sagem keypad phone that they're strongly expecting that to be in egg yep as you can see comes off as a fine powder see the little gold flakes floating around in the acid and this is the interesting part so I'm not sure what this is going to do this is the uh, the actual keypad from that phone which was a separate board so it's got some kind of different treatment from the other gold plated stuff in the phone and as you can see there's not sure what the what the metal was uh, used for this but obviously very little gold in it I suspect that the bits we see floating are probably gold but there there's nothing really there so yeah I guess um, at the end of the day what this I'm, I'm hoping is going to show is that uh, when you look at this stuff it does look like there is a lot of gold inside the phone but the reality is that the gold plating is very thin and so if you apply the same uh, AP type and so that's acid peroxide type approach to recovering the gold from pretty much any of the mobile phone boards that I tested that you would use to recover the foils from RAM you would end up using a lot of acid to get a much smaller amount of gold than you would expect uh, that's not to say that there isn't some value in uh, in mobile phone boards if I just get rid of the uh, get rid of the glass there oops and let's zoom out let's have a bit of a look at this uh, at the Samsung board unfortunately 
the microscope is at, is at its furthest zoom out there so I can't really show the whole board at once but what you should be what you should be picking up from this is there are a lot of beautiful uh, BGA chips inside these boards and because the boards are so thin um, they are probably still actually very good value if you're able to buy them by the kilogram for or by the pound for gold recovery um, I think there's almost no weight to this board one of the objectives with smartphones obviously is to make them very light but there will be substantial gold in the bond wires for a chip like that uh, you know you're always doing well with a chip when you see they've got those I'm just going to get that into focus for you so that's on the chip itself uh, that's a BGA chip that has some um, or is that on the PCB that might be just a, a guide on the PCB I think one of the other boards had a um, had a very nice BGA chip. Oh, yeah, this is the one I was thinking of. So this was the Sagem phone, and if you look at that BGA chip there, let's bring that out for you guys. You know you're always going to be doing fairly well when you see these chips with the uh, with the little gold uh, bits on the side. They always seem to uh, have a fair number of gold bond wires inside them. So yeah, uh, cell phone boards in general probably actually still worth recovering. And of course, if you have a setup like a um, a cyanide leach type setup whereby you can actually depopulate these boards and then leach off all this surface gold very quickly and without putting a lot of effort into dissolving the base metal underneath, you will find that uh, it would still be very well worth doing but in my opinion if you are going to be trying to uh, recover this plated gold using uh, a method that relies on you dissolving away the base metal under the gold you would be pretty much wasting your time i can't see that being worth the effort for how thin the plating is on these boards so uh, there's probably going to be one or two more of these videos uh, coming along uh, relatively soon so one uh, viewer requested that I have a look at the plating thickness on the bottom of the pinless like Pentium 4 processors and I'm, I'm quite interested to try that so I might give that a try tomorrow night and uh, yeah if you guys have any other ideas for things that would be interesting please post them in the comments and if I can get my hands on the e-waste I'm very happy to uh, give it a try Cool. Hopefully this video has been useful and uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Cool. Catch you guys later.